In this video, I'm going to be covering motion and animation basics in effective presentation design. And to start off, I'm going to speak on the four main benefits of incorporating animations in your presentations. The first is to communicate your ideas effectively. By adding animations, you can illustrate complex ideas clearly and effectively, making the message you are trying to communicate easier for your audience to understand and remember. Animations also help your presentation stand out, as it shows that you are able to own more of the presentation design process, ensuring that your presentations are more engaging and visually appealing, setting them apart from generic slide designs. Another big benefit of animations is that they help delight your audience. Well executed animations can capture attention and keep your audience engaged, making your presentation more enjoyable and memorable. Personally, I'm a sucker for nice motion and interactions. Just a bunch of little things that are done really well that lead to a great experience. Finally, it helps push design forward as it demonstrates a commitment to modern cutting edge design practices, showing that you can move away from the quote unquote standard design practices and explore creative ways to deliver a more engaging experience. Now, when we talk about animation within the context of presentation design, there are three main types, functional animation, structural animation, and emotional animation. Functional animation enhances the usability and understanding of the presentation by providing feedback and guiding the audience's attention. Think like slide transitions, progress indicators, interactive buttons, and over effects. Structural animation, on the other hand, organizes content and helps to clearly demonstrate the relationship between different elements within the presentation. This includes animation that shows hierarchies, flowcharts, and step-by-step -step processes. While emotional animation adds a layer of engagement and emotional connection with the audience, these animations create a specific mood, making the presentation more enjoyable and leaving a lasting impression. Think of them as moments of delight. Now, I'll go over some presentation examples on the different types of animation. So, here's an example of functional animation in an interactive Q&A presentation. Notice how with the click of the arrow button, some elements rotate, change position, and fade in, providing a more immersive experience for the audience. Next, we have an example of structural animation. Here, an expanding list introduces different speakers. This not only makes the presentation engaging, it organizes the content clearly and gives a sense of structure. Finally, we have an example of emotional animation. Here, the picture of the tiger moves across the screen, revealing key details before stopping at its final position. This makes the presentation more enjoyable and leaves a lasting impression compared to static presentations. Now, let's talk about the anatomy of an animation. So, all animations will have four main parts. They will have a trigger, a response, timing, and easing applied to them. The trigger is what actually causes the animation. This can be an action like a click, mouse over, or swipe, and it can be set manually or automatically. Next, we have the response, which is the animated reaction that occurs when the element is triggered. So, do they move? Do they increase or decrease in size? Do they fade, spin, just to name a few? Then we have the timing of the animation, which is comprised of two parts. The duration, which is how long the animation takes, and the delay, which is how long after the trigger the animation will begin. Finally, we have easing, which is essentially the smoothness of the animation. Easing is used to mimic real-world behavior, making animations appear more natural and less mechanical. Now, let's quickly go over some guiding principles on timing durations. When dealing with interactive elements like clicks and mouse overs, avoid using long durations as they make the response feel slow. These interactions need to be quick, so I recommend a maximum duration of half a second for this type of interaction in order to maintain good perceived performance. Notice how I said perceived performance. This is because timing can control the pace and engagement of your presentation. For instance, in the video below, observe the over effects. As the cursor moves across specific parts of the slide, the score follows almost immediately, as if it's tracking the cursor. Along with this movement, description about the score fades in and out, creating a more engaging and memorable experience. On the other hand, longer durations are used to create drama and impact, such as in slide transitions or when objects move across a large part of the screen. A good example is the presentation below, where the picture loops continuously to visualize the ancient citadel Machu Picchu. This subtle motion creates a dramatic and impactful effect. For delays, there are two ways you can go about it. A regular delay and a staggered delay. A delayed animation includes a pause before the start of a single animation or an animation sequence. While a staggered delay creates a cascading effect with elements animated in a staggered fashion, 
which makes for a more dynamic and interesting experience. The videos below illustrate the concept pretty well. In the video on the left, there is only delays before the entrance and exit animations. In the video on the right, there are slight time delays between each of the entrance and exit animations, so they are not all entering and exiting at the same time, creating a more realistic feel. Now, let's talk a bit about easing. I remember from before, easing helps influence the smoothness of the animations, and there are five main easing functions used in animating design elements. There is linear easing, there is ease in, which is also known as smooth start or accelerate, there is ease out, which is also known as smooth end or decelerate, there is ease bolt, which is also known as ease in, ease out, and then there is elastic easing, which might also be referred to as bounce end. Now, understanding when to apply these easing functions is really important as it helps mimic the behavior of the real world, making animations and interactions feel very natural. Here is an example that will help you understand the relationship between an animated object's total duration and the easing that is applied to it. So, here we have five different race cars, and the total duration it takes for these cars to move from one end of the screen to the other is two seconds, as indicated in the top right corner, with the only difference being the easing function that is applied. So, in the first row, the car is moving at a constant rate, not speeding up or slowing down at any point over the course of its duration. As you know, in the real world, objects don't move in a linear fashion almost ever because physics exists, right? We have things like gravity and friction that either speed up or slow down objects over time. In the second rule, we have an example of ease in, smooth start or acceleration. Here you'll notice that the car accelerates over time, so it starts slow and ends fast over time. Next, you have an example of ease out or smooth end, which is basically just the opposite of ease in. Here the car decelerates, so it starts fast and ends slowly over time. Next, we have ease both. Here the car starts slowly, speeds up and then slows down. This easing function as opposed to linear easing is great for smooth and natural transitions, giving a more balanced and organic feel to the movement. Finally, we have an example of elastic easing. Here the car starts quickly and then decelerates with bounces before coming to a stop. It's really fun to make these bouncy animations, but you have to be careful not to overdo it because they tend to go on a bit longer than it seems, right? It may seem like the car reaches the hand way before every other car, but it's actually moving slightly back and forth, taking a bit more time. So, be careful not to overuse elastic easing when animating design elements. Now, I'm going to show you some presentation examples of when you can use the different easing functions. So, here's an example of linear easing. Like I said before, you rarely use linear easing, but this is an example where it actually makes sense to use it in a presentation, because in this example, the objects are moving at a constant rate continuously. Now, I'm going to use an example to help illustrate the difference between ease out, ease in, and ease both. So, when animating objects to enter the slide area or the screen, it's essential to apply ease out or a smooth end to the entrance animation. This ensures that the object decelerates and arrives smoothly as it enters the screen. The opposite is true for when an object exits the screen. In this case, ease in or a smooth start is applied so that the object accelerates off the screen, as you can see in this presentation. Ease both is a more natural way of moving objects and is best for applying easing to objects that always remain on the screen. So, objects that are always in view. Now, here's an example where you can apply elastic easing. And as you can see, with the entrance of each object, there's a subtle bounce, adding a dynamic and lively feel to the presentation. To conclude this presentation, I will go over the different ways that you can use animations in your presentations. First is for effective visual demonstration, basically animated infographics. In this case, you are using animation to introduce different activities or steps in the process, ensuring you communicate your ideas in both an appealing and engaging way. You can also use animations to enhance your data visualization, moving away from static visuals and bringing your data to life with subtle motion and effects. Another way to incorporate animations is through micro-interactions, like clicks and mouse overs. You can see some examples here. The creative possibilities are unimaginable, and overall, it ensures a more immersive experience for your audience. Finally, animations can be used to create engaging, minimal visuals. If you're like me and you consume motion and design content on social media, you've probably seen this type of animations on TikTok and Instagram. And the eye engagement of these pieces of content is a clear indicator that people prefer animated content over static visuals. Alright, that's pretty much the basics of animation in effective presentation design.
If you have any questions or feedback, I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comment section. If you're interested in animated tutorials or presentation templates, the links is in the description. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next one.